So far for these videos, we've been looking at a variable which holds just a single value. But in Python, you can make a list of values. So, first of all, we're going to declare our variable name to be name. And I'm going to put some names inside this square bracket, which means the list. So if I just have, say, three names, so we'll have Sarah, we'll have Fred, and we'll have Bob. Okay. Now, rather than just having a single name, we've now got three names all stored in this one variable. So actually, should we call it names of plural because we've got more than one name? Now, if we print out just what is in this variable, if we run the program, it will just print out that we have Sarah, Fred, and Bob stored in our variable called names. One of the things we can do with a list is we can sort it. So if we type in names.sort, and then actually we'll print it out again to see how it looks the second time. Let's just see what difference that's made. So the first time it's printed out Sarah, Fred, and Bob, the order we put them in. But now it's done Bob, Fred, Sarah. This is arranged into alphabetical order. Now, just as we can order it into alphabetical order, we can put it in reverse alphabetical order just by doing names.reverse. And then, of course, we need to print it out so we can see what's going on. We run our piece of code. And it does Sarah, Fred, Bob, our original order. Then Bob's Fred, Sarah. That's alphabetical order. And then, actually, Sarah, Fred, Bob, which is reverse alphabetical order again. So far, we've created our list, we've printed out, and we've shuffled the order, either in alphabetical order or reverse alphabetical order. But we can do other things too. Let's go keep our original list. What we're going to do is we're going to try and add some from the keyboard. Now, if I want to add three more names to our list, I can either do the piece of code three times, or a better way is to loop around three times. So as we've done looping, and we know how to loop a certain number of times using a for loop, we're going to loop around 0, 0,3, which starts off at 0, goes 0, 1, 2, which loops around a total of three times. Because remember, computers love to start counting at 0. The indented code is the code that's going to be done, so we make sure we are indented. And we're going to do names dot append. Now append means add to the end. Now we want to add to the end a name. Now we can either get our name from the keyboard and store it in a variable n, and then append whatever is inside n to the end of our list. Rather than having a variable, we can actually put this into one line. We can actually take in the data from the keyboard and append it straight into our list. So that's going to do the same code, but it's just a little bit shorter. And what we'll do is we'll just print out our final list, and let's test our software. So first of all, it prints out Sarah, Fred, and Bob. It's now looping around my three names. So let's add in uh, three names. Let's add in Mark, Julie, and Emma. And now it prints them out, and it's added Mark, then it's added Julie, then it's added Emma. Now, our code would make it a little bit more sense if we actually told the user what to do. So remember, to ask them for something, you put in a print command. So let's say, please enter a name. And I'll ask for that just before the name goes in. At the moment, when we print out our list, it's in the square brackets, and it doesn't look very pretty. If we wanted to print out our names and make them look a little bit more pretty, we could print them out one at a time on each line. But to be able to print that out, once again, we're going to need to loop around through the list. So if I now try and print out the names, if I want just one of the names, I just put a number in a square bracket afterwards. Name 0 would be Sarah. Name 1 would be Fred. Name 2 would be Bob. Name 3 would be Mark. Name 4 would be Julie. Name 5 would be Emma. 0 to 5. I know there's six of them, but zero to five. Now we could put a six here, so it loops around zero to five and prints them out. But a better way, rather than putting in a number there, 
would actually be to say we want to go through all of the names in the list. So what we're going to say is we can go through the length of my list. The length of my list. My list is called names. So now it's going to go through all of my names. So actually it didn't matter how many I decide to add or how many I have at the beginning because it will just go through all of them when I print it out. Let's try it, see what happens. So it's going to ask me for my name, so I'll put in Mark, Julie, and Emma. And now it's printed out initially as a list, so it's got the square brackets, but then it has printed out each one on a separate line, which looks a little bit neater because it doesn't have the speech marks and it doesn't have the square bracket around it. So I've just looped through my list. If we wanted to change one of them, we could change one of them very easily. Now, if you look at my list, I have got Sarah in position zero. And if I wanted to, I can just say names position zero equals, and then put a new name. And that will just change over that one piece of data. So we'll put in, keeping the names the same each time. And now this time, it's printed out my list, then it printed out the one at a time, and then it changed the first one, which was Sarah, it changes to Ian. And then it printed out the list of names again. And you can see that the first one has changed from Sarah to Ian. So you can change them one at a time if you want to. So we can reorder them, we can change them, we can print them, and we can add to the list. You might want to add one in the middle. If you notice what we've done so far is we've done a command called append. Append just adds it to the end, which is nice and easy. But you might want to add one to the middle. Now, if you want to add one to the middle, there is just an insert command. Now, for the insert command, you have to say where you want it to be inserted. And then you have to say what it is you want to be inserted. Now, I'm actually going to put Emma again, because I want to have Emma in my list twice. So, again, after you've done a piece of code, we will need to print it out again so we can see what's going on. When we run our code, it asks me for my names. Again, I'll still do the same names just so you can see the same data. Now then, it's printed out our original list. It's printed them all out one at a time. It's printed out the list with Ian instead of Sarah at the beginning. And then finally, it has added Emma into position 1. Now remember, computers like to start from 0. So Ian is position 0, Fred was position 1, but we've now inserted Emma into position 1. So Fred has moved along to position 2. So they've all moved up by 1. So we can insert a name into our list. Now if we've done insertion and we've done appending, I suppose the only thing left to do really is what happens if you want to get rid of a name. There is a remove command, and all you have to do is state what you want to remove. So, I'm sorry Bob, but we're going to remove Bob. And again, let me print out the names so you can see what they look like after we've done that task. When I run the code, again we'll still keep Mark, Julie and Emma as our input text. So if you look at the bottom three lines, first of all it replaced Sarah with Ian. Then it added Emma in position 1 and moved Fred and Bob, Mark, Julie and Emma across. And then our last one was it removed the word Bob. So if you look at our list, it goes from Fred straight to Mark. Bob has been missed out. Bob was in position 0, 1, 2. Bob was in position 3. But now it just goes Fred and Mark. So Bob has been removed. Now I'm just going to do one more remove command. Because you might say that what happens if there's more than one name in there. And that is why I've got Emma in the list twice. Because if you decide you want to remove it, what it will do is it will remove the first one it comes to. Now if you think about it, it doesn't really matter too much which one is removed, because you just want uh, the name removed from the list. But it will remove the first one. So. If I just run it again, and I'll put in my names again, Mark, Julie, and Emma, 
And if you notice the bottom four lines, the first one replaces Sarah with Ian. The next one uh, inserts the name Emma, uh, just before the name Fred. And then we remove Bob. And then finally we have removed the first Emma. So it is back to saying Ian, Fred, Mark. We've removed the Emma from between Ian and Fred. Those are the basic commands used for making lists. Now a list here is a list of strings. We can also make a list of integers. And we can even have two-dimensional lists, but we're going to save that for another lesson.